Hi, welcome back to Your Future, Your Finances. I'm your host, Brian Kuhn. We're talking again with Rachel Borachinsky of Healthcare Deciphered regarding healthcare costs, how to save them, how to navigate uh, the, the various healthcare plans in the industry today. Welcome back to the show. Yeah, thank you again. Um, last segment, we were talking about trying to save money um, to the extent uh, possible. Um, what are the areas that y you can save money on your health care costs? What can you do? Yeah, that's a great question. The biggest area that you can really save money kind of off the bat is pharmacy costs. Mm -hmm. One thing that's kind of been well published is different pharmacies offer different rates to individuals, whether you have insurance, don't have insurance. The cost when you walk into one pharmacy versus another is vastly different, mm -hmm. and it's been pretty well published that you know CVS might be the most expensive, but there are other comparable retailers that also offer pretty significant uh, prices mm -hmm. to consumers, especially for Montgomery County residents. One of the big things to consider is there are a lot of programs where you can get generics for less than five dollars, or if you transfer your prescriptions to a certain pharmacy, they'll give you $20 back and a gift card. It's more money in your pocket, but mm -hmm. the other kind of hidden gem is mail order pharmacy. There's a number of people that do use it, but by and large, if you enroll in mail order pharmacy, you significantly reduce your costs overall, mm -hmm. um, usually by 10 to $20 per prescription, wow. uh, even more for brand name drugs. Probably a large percentage, uh, 10 to 15 percent, just by ordering it, you know, via the mail and having mm -hmm. it come directly to you. Mm, that's a good idea. Yeah, it's actually really good. And uh, there's a lot of cost calculators on the websites, too. For other services, uh, surgeries, just basic outpatient procedures, shopping around and looking at those cost calculators, and there's even some that are programmed right into your health plan's websites. Mm -hmm. I always say please use them because going to one provider versus another it's a cost savings to you to calculate what you're going to pay before you go, and then there's no surprises on the back end. Yeah. Um, we talked last segment also about open enrollment, so that's coming up. Um, what are th some things that uh, people can do to avoid mistakes? What are some of the mistakes they make during open enrollment? Yeah, so we talked about earlier copays, and I honestly can't stress that enough. Um, but one of the big mistakes I think that people do make is assuming that they don't have options and assuming that just because their employer is offering that insurance or they only have one or two options, you know, on the private industry or your group insurance, that that's all they can really do. So electing any plan is a viable option. And really that's where people get into trouble because when you're not looking at that language in the contracts and you're buying anything else, a TV or a car, mm -hmm. you're always going to look at the fine print. Mm -hmm. And you have to do the same thing with health insurance as well. You really want to make sure that there are no surprises on the back end. And the only way to do that is to really calculate those costs and compare them down. If you're paying $15 for primary care visit and if you're going to urgent care, you don't want to end up paying 20% in coinsurance, which, you know, mm -hmm. urgent care tends to be a few hundred if not thousand dollars so mm -hmm. it's good to have you know a seventy five dollar copay for urgent or emergent care and really that's what you're going to use your physician visits and your emergency care you want to make sure those are copays or at least pay the least out of pocket that you can mm -hmm. um, fantastic now there's another thing that's going on in healthcare uh, that they say high deductible and then you have what's called a health savings account so you have money in an account so uh, talk a little bit about that yeah so there's a rule now um, from the federal government that came out that if you offer a high deductible plan you have to offer a health care savings account mm -hmm. and there's three different types two of them are owned by employers so really the money is not your own but at HSA a typical health care savings account you actually own it and you has to be offered to you as part of a high deductible plan but the one actually important thing to note is you do not have to enroll in the one that either your employer offers you or the one offered with your independent health plan, mm -hmm. you can shop around. And a lot of times the independent healthcare savings accounts with banks and the local community offer a more competitive rate. So you're getting more back in your money. It essentially functions just like an IRA. Mm -hmm. um, but in this case, you're using it just specifically for medical expenses. In addition, depending on which one you enroll in, depends on what services that you're able to use. A lot of them you can use outpatient go into retail pharmacy, get Band-Aids, cough medicine, and it's covered under your HSA. Mm -hmm. Some of them even take it a step further and cover Lasix or cosmetic procedures. It's really a benefit depending on what your individual goal is, mm -hmm. which healthcare savings account you really want to go with. Good. 
Um, and then with the, the time we have left, so you're the CEO, you're the founder, actually, of Healthcare Deciphered. Is that correct? Yes. So what, uh, what's it like being the CEO and, and founding that company? And then also, if you don't mind, what does Healthcare Deciphered do for uh, employers yes, and people? Yes, absolutely. It's been a great year. We're just over our year anniversary, and our mm -hmm. team is expanding. And I can tell you that I spent over 10 years in health insurance and working with providers and doctors and health plans. And it's been great to be on our own and really be able to offer the services. I've pretty much taken my experience over the last 10 years and put it together into a product that I really feel like we can market to people. And our ultimate goal is really to help. I mean, we put a lot of information out through our blog just to get the information out to people of, you know, tips and tricks that you can do in the industry and how really to navigate it. And that's our goal and our vision is to help at the end of the day. And mm -hmm. when we're partnering with individuals and families and small businesses, we're offering them an advantage that goes above and beyond, you know, their traditional resources that they have and something that we're really passionate about. I can tell you that starting your own company is probably the hardest thing you'll ever do, uh, but it's also most rewarding. And we, our clients are amazing. I couldn't say more about them. I'm actually pretty humbled by that. And okay. it's been a very exciting time. And we've got a lot of things coming up that we're really happy to offer our clients and things to do in the community that we just really enjoy. Fantastic. And what's the website? Our website is healthcaredeciphered.com. Healthcaredeciphered.com. Mm -hmm. Okay, fantastic. We've been talking with Rachel Borachinsky of healthcaredeciphered.com regarding the healthcare industry. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. And uh, we'll be right back.